It's time to show them we are more than meets the eye. We can transform now! On three, one... Ah! Use these things! Ah! Oh, look up the wheels! I need wheels! <gasps> They're not the bad guys. Why did you cut the door? What? No, it was already like that. Right? Yes, that's, that's right. right. Yes. It was, yeah, yes. it was already mm -hmm. like yeah. Whoever that... cut that trailer there needs a dock to their pay or something because that does not represent the movie that we got at all. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am a Transformers fan. Not super huge or anything, but I am a fan. And whenever there is a new show, movie, and even sets of toys, you know, I, I pay attention. I really do like the Transformers quite a lot. Um, with this movie, as I saw the trailer in theaters, um, I thought, mm, I don't really think that's going to be for me. But that was a huge disservice to this movie. If you're an older Transformers fan, I want to let you know, if you saw this trailer and thought the same thing, I think it'll really surprise you because it surprised me a lot. You know, other than bad marketing, I think another unfortunate thing that's just true that this movie is facing as a challenge is the fact that the popularity of the Transformers that was brought on by the Michael Bay movies has died down at this point. And I think that they thought that Rise of the Beast was going to reignite that interest of the Transformers. and it unfortunately didn't, not at all. I myself enjoyed the film, and I'm looking forward to what they do next, if there is going to be another one. But it is pretty obvious from its performance that not a lot of people really care anymore. And I think that with this movie coming out after Rise of the Beast, it unfortunately has that sort of stain on it. That, oh, it's another Transformers movie. And that trailer, this marketing, didn't really help things. Which is unfortunate because this movie, surprisingly enough, behind that trailer has a really mature story and it may be in my top 10 this year. No, I won't lie to you. Okay. At the end of the day, it is trying to gain a kid audience. So it does have some of that kid movie comedy in there. You know, there are characters that repeat jokes and there are characters that are really excitable and 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 some people may find annoying. There are some of those jokes in here, but you know, there's no fart jokes or anything like that. Uh, the the comedy is is there, but it's really scaled back. It's not obnoxious at all. And the all celebrity cast all do a fantastic job. I want to touch on of course the two most prominent uh, voice actors here that people have probably piqued most interest towards, and that's Chris Hemsworth as Orion Pax and Brian Tyree Henry as D-16. So Chris Hemsworth as Orion Pax, who would later on become Optimus Prime, when I first heard his voice, I thought, yeah, that's fine. There were some fans that didn't like it at all, and there were another group of fans that thought, you know, for a young Optimus Prime, he sounds fine. And I was in that camp. I thought he sounded fine, despite the fact that I thought that the movie didn't really look that great. Um, Because he has sort of that gravel to his voice. Not quite Peter Cullen level. He'll always be, you know, his own legend for that. That'll always be his trademark. But he's kind of got it going on in his voice. And, of course, as the movie progresses, as he's becoming into his own, Orion Pax, he starts kind of gaining that inflection a little bit, you know, and near the end, he, he goes for it. He says the, are you Optimus Prime? He, he goes for it, right? I'm working on it. Uh, he kind of goes for it, you know, and it, it doesn't sound as compelling as when Peter Cullen does it, but it sounds pretty good. And Brian Tyree Henry was an interesting choice for D16 slash Megatron. I thought that he was the best character in the movie, frankly, with his story here and, you know, the, the, you know, he's Megatron. We all know that he turns his story of how he does turn is so heartbreaking. Uh, quite honestly, until he started doing some really unspeakable acts because of his anger, I was actually kind of on his side on why he was so hurt, so betrayed, so angry. I understood. And he gives 
a killer performance too. You feel his pain. You feel that sadness, that that betrayal. And like I said, at some moments, I was rooting for him. I was like, yeah, that's unfair. And then, you know, he does some things towards the end. It's like, okay, and that's, that's not cool. Um, Everyone else is serviceable. You know, Charlotte Johansson plays this uh, pink minor bot um, named Alita. And then Keegan-Michael Key plays Bumblebee. For Keegan-Michael Key's Bumblebee, he's kind of hit or miss for people. I didn't mind him, but a lot of people that I knew had seen the movie kept telling me, you're probably not going to like him. You're you're going you're gonna to be really annoyed by him. But I wasn't. I didn't mind him at all. He did repeat one joke quite a bit. Working on some nicknames. The the one I'm floating right now is um, Badassatron, which is actually pronounced Badassatron. And then when he would do the joke, repeated it within that time frame that he was saying it, which started getting a little grating, but I like Keegan-Michael Key. I liked his performance here. Changing Bumblebee quite a bit, but I don't know. It was, it was fine. That's a lot of this movie in terms of outside of the narrative. It's just fine. It's No, you know what? It's more than fine. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying that. It's really good. The animation is also really gorgeous. Cybertron in modern Transformers hasn't been explored that much. You know, we when we see Cybertron, for the most part, it's a war-torn landscape, right? It's already a dying planet. Here, it is that, but you see more life down below the surface, as it were. You see the city, you see the life that these robots live. And I thought that was really interesting. This is a really interesting world. As of this recording, I think Transformers 1 is nearing the end of its theatrical run, and it's sitting at a 72 million box office, I think. And it has a budget of 75 million, which means it's just this close of breaking even, which is unfortunate. This movie got it so bad from the jump. Not many have gone to see it, and it was due to that marketing. And unfortunately, the wavering popularity of the Transformers franchise right now in this day. Rather than give us the Autobot versus Decepticon storyline, they gave us the origin of it, which was cool to see. And again, they told a compelling and heartbreaking story with it that really surprised me again. But there were just a lot of factors that, you know, just made this movie fall between the cracks. And it's really unfortunate and honestly a lot sadder of a story for a movie than even Furiosa. Furiosa was a surprise and kind of sad. This is even sadder because it was a movie that no one expected to be worth anything. It was just going to be a little kid's movie and it's not. This is a family movie through and through. If you haven't already, please go see it. Buy 10, 20, 30 tickets. This movie deserves its support. And it's a shame that it's not getting it. I'm really hoping that despite the, you know, financial success, the, the financial earnings, that they'll still continue with these because this was a story that deserved to be seen. And it deserved to be told, too. And they treated it with a lot of respect. It was just that this marketing just didn't prove that. It didn't really pull people in. And man, it, it's such an unfortunate thing. So if you haven't gone to see this movie yet, if you're a Transformers fan, new or old, go see it. Take your kids to it. Take yourself to it. It, it. Trust me, you'll be doing yourself a favor. Because my wife and I went to see it on a lark. We thought, hey, you know what? Cute little kids movie. It'll pass the time. Let's just, let's just do it. And we came out of there... <laughs> we came out of there, at least I did, so mad at myself for sleeping on this movie. Don't sleep on this movie. You'll regret it. Once you, if you're thinking, eh, I'll just wait for it to be on Paramount Plus or something, you're going to really regret it. You're going to kick yourself. You didn't see it on a big screen, it, genuinely. Uh, but that's, that's going to do it for me on this video. If you like what you saw, Please subscribe, 
Follow me down on my socials, linked in the description. Uh, and tell me what you thought about this movie if you did see it. And what do you think about the Transformers in general? Uh, do you think that the franchise is just done? And, you know, that's part of the reason this movie isn't doing so well. Or do you think, hey, it's still got some life in it and it can, it can keep going. Let's talk everything Transformers down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Go see this movie.